Hey guys, Crispin Pally guest hosting this week for Barry. Uh, I'm on my home lake, Kentucky Lake. I haven't fished here in a year nearly. Uh, this lake has been fishing super tough. This is my maiden voyage for 2020 on my home pond. We're gonna get out there and see what we can find. Stay tuned, cause Let's Fish TV is on the air now. That is a fish. Oh man, look at this. <laughs> It's time for the only program that brings you real-time fishing reports from the Southeast region every week. Oh my gosh. Oh, look at that. Woo! This is Let's Fish. Hey guys, thanks for joining us this week. I'm Crispin Pally. I'm guest hosting for Barry, and we are coming to you live from Kentucky Lake. Uh, this is a impoundment of the Tennessee River. It's a big, big body of water. Kentucky Lake is 189 miles from dam to dam. Uh, fish is incredibly big, and what is known uh, pretty much throughout the bass fishing world as one of the best lakes ever has been in a really tough down cycle. However, I'm hearing some good things. This is my first time out on my home lake and probably since last summer. Uh, we're gonna be fishing predominantly spring patterns. I'm gonna, I'm gonna break everything down as we're doing it so you could come here and do this or perhaps employ them on your home lake. Speaking of your home lake, we're gonna be getting you some relevant local information from regional reporters that are in tune with what's going on right where you are. Uh, I'm gonna drop this boat. Speaking of boats, we've got an all new low 198 Stinger I'm gonna be fishing out of today. It's rigged out with Lowrance Electronics. It's got motor guide trolling motor power poles and a Mercury four stroke. Uh, we're gonna have a great time in this boat. Fish is awesome. But while I'm out here getting the boat put in, getting rigged up, I'm gonna send you back to the studio for your weekend plan. Hello everyone, thanks for stopping by. The Salooner Tables are predicting fair game fish activity both days this weekend. Look for those prime daytime hours to begin in the afternoon around 4.08 on Saturday and 5.10 on Sunday with early morning action kicking off at 3.43 on Saturday and 4.45 on Sunday. Expect the sun to rise at 7.03 and set at 7.57. This weekend, we'll display a moon that is 82% visible. We're coming right back with fishing reports from throughout the area. Plus, I'll return with Bass Master Elite Angler, Jamie Hartman, on this week's Ask the Pro feature. Stick with us. Guys, it is, uh, it's early spring. Uh, the water temperature is 50, ranges from about 52 to about 54. Uh, the lake is coming up, uh, as always, in the southeast. It is rain for many days it's supposed to rain again today and for the next several days so we're dealing with varying water color uh, what I'm gonna concentrate on today is uh, I'm gonna look for staging fish fish that are coming from where they would winter in deeper water up to um, you know points channel banks um, things of that nature where you're seeing these fish get ready to go shallow to spawn um, Typically, these, these fish are, are fat, they're, they're, they're hungry, they feed, they bite, but with, with the varying water levels and temperature, they can be a little finicky. So, that's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna ease out here, and I'm gonna spend most of my time fishing main river stuff and just inside the bays and creeks, not going to the back, because I just don't think there's a lot of fish back there yet. So, as we're going along, I'll explain what we're doing. Hang tight, let's go see what we can find. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Mercury, Go Boldly, Lowrance, America's number one fish finder, Luz, Feel the Difference, and by Gulf Shores and Orange Beach, Alabama. Get our free fishing guide at orangebeach.com. Fat, pre-spawn, been eating, couldn't resist the thunder cricket, Kentucky Lake spotted bass. one in that brush pile. Oh. oh, he's got me around something. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. One brush pile right in the middle of this ditch. Come here. Come here. It's a nice one. The old structure jig right where you want it, right in between his eyeballs. That one, uh, 
here's the cool thing, man. So the water's low right now, and there's not a lot of stuff in the water. The stuff these fish would normally get up against is just um, kind of not in, the water's not up to it yet. The water's probably lacks about three feet being where it really needs to be for the most cover to be in the water. In situations like that on lakes like this, on Kentucky Lake where the water level fluctuates, what I would tell you is find you one log, one stump. In this case, there's one brush pile right there. That it, I was trolling down through here and just saw it and got the right angle on it. And that is gonna, the odds of it having a fish are so great right now. As the water goes up, those fish will still get in those spots, but I think they're more valuable right now than they ever will be. And especially when this water's low, stay back off of them a little bit with your trolling motor, make a good cast, don't splash it, put it in the right spot or cast past it and pull into it. That one right there, I actually didn't make a great cast. And when I pulled up to it, I thought I was hung up and I felt him pull back, but you don't have to be good when they're biting. I'll take those every day. Well, coastal fishing is turned on with bright, warm, sunny skies and balmy breezes. I'll have all the details for coastal fishing, but first this from our good friends at Mirror Lure. Mirror Lure, building quality saltwater lures since 1937, including the new line of Mirrodine plugs. Turn on the bite anytime, tie on a Mirror Lure. Well, Captain Tim Cutting on St. Simons Island, Georgia, is getting lots of spotted sea trout fishing inshore creeks, shell bars, and at the lower ends of sounds where the water is clear and salty. He says there's plenty of small fish, lots of throwbacks, but he's also catching good numbers of keepers up to 20 inches. These are nice sized trout, fun to catch for uh, this time of year, uh, and Tim's catching tons of those fish. He says red fishing is also very good for three to eight pound size fish, that perfect slot size fish, uh, using uh, jigs, spoons, and spinner baits on shell bars and little creek runouts for those redfish. Triple tail fishing also is beginning to turn on along the coast. They're catching triple tail up to six pounds of sight casting to them moving along the beaches. Uh, this fishing will last for another month or two and it's just starting now but that's great fun sight fishing along the coast. In Mississippi it's white trout and uh, whiting ground, ground mullet. Uh, fishing has been on fire for Captain Robert Brody out of Biloxi. He's catching boxes full of these fun to catch family fish. In Alabama Spotted sea trout fishing has been good in the lower Clearwater Bay areas of Mobile Bay and also along the beach areas along uh, Orange Beach, that's that area where the water's clear and salty. Look for birds and early morning fishing and late afternoon fishing and even at night has been good for spotted sea trout. Well that's it for the southeast coast. Get out on the water and take a youngster with you when you go. There's one right there. Suckers mean, whatever. Come here. Old Thunder Cricket. Look at that, that's a spotted bass. That's a chunk spotted bass, too. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what, boys and girls, on this lake, you don't catch old spot much prettier than that one right there. That is a fat, pre-spawn, been eating, couldn't resist the Thunder Cricket. Kentucky Lake Spotted Bass. Um, kind of a neat deal. We're, we're, I'm on a flat right here. There's a back channel off the river that runs against it and there's a ton of current. And there's one little brush pile right there on the point of this island. And that guy right there, I reeled that Thunder Cricket bite and just, just loaded up on it. And, and here, here's a real quick tip for you. When you get in areas like this where there's a lot of current, there's a lot of turbulence, sometimes you wanna go with something like that thunder cricket that puts off just a ton of thump, a ton of vibration. Cause I think in all that turbid water, it helps them locate it and find it. So uh, I, I'm convinced it works. I'm gonna have to get back, spun back around, throw back up there and see if, his, see if his twins up there. That's about as good as I get right there, boys and girls on Kentucky Lake. That's a fat spotted bass. That's, that's a pretty one right there. We're gonna let this fat, fat fella go. There's one. Oh, even way out here. Let's look at that one. Golly, Bill. I'll take that right there all day, every day.
they, it seems like if I ever pick the jig up, I never get a bite. The, all my bites come on casts where I just drag it. And another thing, I had this old guy teach me one time, Dave Barnett, old buddy of mine from Missouri. He's a, I, as good a jig fisherman as I've ever known. And he taught me something. He goes, everybody wants to put a lot of action on a jig. He said, if you're trying to emulate a crawfish, which we typically are, he said, man, he goes, do you think them crawfish are jumping around? He said, being real erratic, they're typically sneaking around, trying not to let one of these spotted bass find them and eat them. He said, uh, you know, when you're in the right scenario, he said, keep that rod tip down and drag, make, make real short, subtle movements that would be real natural. I'm not saying, I mean, there's times out here on this lake where you jerk that jig as hard as you can, but a whole lot of the time, especially this time of year, it seems like, they don't want that much movement. And that's, you know, obviously the water's a little cooler, 57 degrees now. Um, they're gonna, you know, all this stuff is relative to water temperature. But when this water's cool, there's a lot of days where you'll do way better by just literally just dragging that jig as slow as you can stand it. There's one. Ah, he's way out here. Come here. Another big spot. Don't got a chance. Look at that one. Golly, Bill. That's a toad. It's been a pretty good spot fishing day. I, uh, and right there's a big one. I'll take that right there all day, every day. Look, here's the thing about spots. They're oftentimes super aggressive, but they are sucker for a little jig. And that little three quarter ounce Denny Brower baby structure jig, it has a zero degree line tie and it's got a two alt owner hook in it. But the way the shape of that head with that line tie, I'm telling you, it is poison on those deeper fish. The way uh, you've just got so much more gap there for them to get it in their mouth. You don't miss a lot of fish with that jig. And that one right there sure didn't miss it. I don't, I bet he wished that it had a different hook in it. Hey folks, it's time for your Carolinas report. This week brought to you by Crazy System Marina. Remember, we're still open. We've got great boats here where you can come down, rent a private boat, go out on the water and get yourself out away from everything, or come let one of our private charter captains take your small group out and put you on some fish as well. Visit crazysistermarina.com. You can find more information on that. Also, I want to talk about the Catawba River. My good buddy Lee Huffman up there of Huffy's Guide Service tells me that the stripers are really starting to show up now. He's out with some good live baits, slow trolling, and finding them back in those coves and where they're going to be this time of the year and doing some good numbers with some nice sized fish this time of the year. Also, let's talk about Stevie Pack down at Pack's Landing, and I talk about him every year, but right now, the Santee River on that end in Remini is loaded up with striped bass right now. Stevie's going out, he's limited out in like a couple hours using fresh live bait that he's got right there at Pax Landed in Remini, who is open for business right now. Get out on the water and you can go down there. Find a big bend in the river there, anchor up or tie off to a tree, get a couple big knocker rigs out, drop them down and get ready for some exciting action this time of the year. This has been your Carolinas Report brought to you by Crazy Sister Marina. Remember, fish smarter, not harder, and keep your chaos organized. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Motor Guides Tour Pro, Cable Steer Motor with GPS Anchor, Waypoint Marine, the Gulf Coast's leading saltwater boating specialist, Strike King, Taiwan On, and by Low Boat. Welcome to Low Country. Oh yeah, that is a good one. That's a big spot. Come here. They don't get any prettier than that right there. Shaking his head. Feels like a better one. Oh yeah, that is a good one. That's a big spot. Come here. Woo, come here. Come here, pretty girl. Man, that's a big spot right there. Three-eighths ounce Denny Brower baby structure jig. 
Look at the belly on that fish. They don't get any prettier than that right there. Big old fat, I mean, you don't think that fish has been eating good. She thought that old structure jig was a, was a crawfish. These are just such cool fish. They're, they're, they're school fish, they're aggressive fish. Um, you can catch them deep, you can catch them shallow. And what I love is just how many of them you typically catch at one time. That's a nice spotted bass. And I, I'm telling you what, I would come out here and fish for that every day. Will that win a tournament on this lake? No, but there's a lot of places around the country where that's about as good as a spot gets. And around here, that's on the, that's certainly on the upper end of the spectrum. So I'm gonna let this little feller go, or big feller, and we're gonna get out there and get us another one. Hey guys, welcome to this week's Tennessee, Mississippi, and Alabama Fishing Report. As per usual, this report's brought to you by TH Marine. Awesome folks, awesome products. Go over to thmarine.com, check out their line of products. It's gonna change the way you boat. Um, this is such a, such a cool time of year. Uh, there's so many different things going on. All the fish want to bite. I mean, we deal with some frontal stuff, but they really wanna bite. They're all moving towards the bank. So here's where we're gonna go. Grenada, the coolest thing, one of the coolest things you can do in the Southeast is go to Grenada Lake down in Mississippi. Get you a pair of waders, get you what they call a whooping stick, get you a, a, a long, heavy pole, and you go dob around a piece of plastic in the buck brush and around those trees and catch those giant slabs. In Alabama, I'm gonna go to Lay Lake. Uh, Lay Lake is kicking out some big spotted bass right now. Uh, you can catch them on a spinner bait really good. You can catch them on a drop shot and a Ned rig really good. My favorite way to catch them there is on a swim bait. So much fun. And in Tennessee, I, I'm, I tell you where I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go, surprise, surprise, Chickamauga. That place just is full of dinosaurs, big giant bass. Uh, every day on Facebook, I see where somebody's catching a 10 pounder or better. Uh, you, you can catch them doing lots of things. A square bill of KVD 2.5 is really good there right now. But here's the thing, all you gotta do is get here, all you gotta do is go. We'd love to see you here. God bless. Oh, I love it when that happens. Come on. Come here, come on, come on, come on, come on. Running out of daylight. I need to get you in the boat. Look at that. This is pretty cool. So last spot, I'm running in. I tell Chris, hey, I've got this one little steak bed that I always pull in there on. Always catch one. Pull in there, second cast, thunder cricket. Catch that fat dude right there. Well, let me put him back and I'm gonna tell you something real quick. One of the things that I believe makes me better with this Thunder Cricket. If I can figure out, I've got it wrapped around everything in the boat. I, I fish my Thunder Cricket a little bit different than most people do. If you were to look, this is a, a swim bait rod. It has got a very, very moderate tip to it. And, and I throw this, this is the only thing on earth that I fish. Uh, I'm trying to remember what gear ratio this is. Let me see if it tells. A six, eight to one. This is the Tournament Pro, it's a six, eight to one. Everything else I throw real wise has got, you know, eight, three to one, a minimum of a seven, five to one. This dude right here makes me fish that Thunder Cricket at the right speed because I have a tendency to fish it real fast. Um, it, this bait, just the inherent nature of it, it wants to rise. This bait, this reel makes me keep it down. So here's the deal. Get the right rod and get the reel that, that makes you fish a bait at the right speed. If you know you're like me and you got a lead foot when it comes to reeling, just get you one with a slower gear ratio, but I can't do it for everything, but it, it works pretty good with the old Thunder Cricket. Watch our latest episode or catch up on past episodes on our website at letsfishtv.com. Be sure to hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter for new fishing videos every day. And download the free Waypoint TV app to get all the latest episodes every week on your phone, tablet, computer, or smart TV.
Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Bobby Garland Crappie Baits and the original Baby Shad and new slab Huntar Minnow. Glacier Glove. Stay outdoors longer with our gloves, hats, and shades. Balls Out. Made in the USA. Heavy duty mounts for your fish finders. And by Camus Boats. Tomorrow's tournament boat today. Welcome back, everyone. Let's get right to your Ask the Pro question for this week. Charlie wants to know, when you are fishing for a bedding bass, how long should you stay with one fish before you give up and move on? For an answer, we asked Bassmaster Elite Angler Jamie Hartman. Uh, there is no set time for, a, for a, uh, sitting on a bedding fish. You have to be able to read that fish to see how he's reacting to you in the bait. Um, you can, if you set a time, you're gonna you're gonna miss out on some opportunities, I think. So um, I'm gonna look at the fish and see how they're reacting to the bait and if she's locked or not, or he's locked. And um, if they're locked, I'm gonna spend more time. If they're not locked and they're not coming back a lot, then I'm gonna get out of there and go to the next one. Thank you, Jamie. If you want some help from one of the pros, simply go to letsfishtv.com and follow the Ask the Pro link to submit your very own question. Now it's time to find out who wins this week's Big Catch of the Week. It's time for this week's winner of the Big Catch of the Week contest. This week's winner is Alice Guidry of Atlanta, Georgia. With a 106 pound yellowfin tuna she caught off of Venice, Louisiana. To enter the contest, go to letsfishtv.com, click on the Big Catch box on the homepage, and follow the instructions. Or you can post your photo on any Tuesday Big Catch post on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Let's Fish TV. You could have your big fish shown here on our show. Uh, caught several fish, caught a few on a thunder cricket, uh, but undoubtedly the, the, the MVP of my tackle selection today was this 3 8 ounce Denny Brower baby structure jig. I cannot overstate how good this little jig is, especially when you're fishing for, um, as it turned out today, we got into some spotted bass and this little jig is just a bite-sized morsel that they love. A couple of the key attributes, it's got this, what we call this cobra-shaped head and it also has what I think is most important is this owner cut and point hook with this zero degree. A lot of jigs have, the, the hook eye is up here where you tie your line to. This one is straight out the front of the hook. And what that does is it just increases the bite as it, the fish gets it in its mouth. So it doesn't, it's got a big area and you just don't miss fish or lose fish with this jig and this hook. Another thing that's really important is having tons of room. I've got rods scattered all over the deck and this low Stinger 198 has 83 feet of deck space all in an aluminum boat. You know, we're at such a unique, new, odd place in, in our country, in our world right now with this pandemic that we're dealing with. Um, it is certainly a real thing and it certainly calls for concern. But here's what I want to tell you. Um, you have a choice every day to feed your faith or feed your fear. And, and I choose to feed my faith. Uh, you know, in the Bible, Isaiah 41.10 says, do not be afraid for I am with you. And I just have to constantly repeat that to myself. Um, this is a concerning deal. Um, it is a very real thing that we should have respect for, but don't let it change your life. Live life to the fullest. Live life not in fear, but in faith. Live a life of joy, love others, and we're gonna make the best of this. You have a unique opportunity right where you are to be the redeeming factor in your social circle. Thanks for hanging with me today. I hope you learned something that you could come here to Kentucky Lake and catch some of those large mouth and spotted bass like I did. I had a ball. And I'm Crispin Pally. God bless. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you want to see more fishing tips, how to videos, big fish catches, and full episodes of our Let's Fish TV show, be sure to subscribe right here to our YouTube channel. You can also like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter. Good fishing out there.